Hey, good morning, family. It's Friday. Hallelujah. So excited. So glad. It's almost time for the weekend. And um, I want to let you know that, of course, that I love you guys and excited to be able to share this word with you. So I'm just going to jump right in and I'm going to get started. So I'm going to Mark chapter four and I'm just going to read verses 16 and 17 to you. So, um, well, I'll read verse 14 and jump down to 16 and 17. Verse 14 says, the sower sows the word. And then verse 16 says, these likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness and they have no root in themselves and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. And so um, just going through Mark chapter four, this is, uh, you know, we sow the word. What happens? Why is it that sometimes people will say, well, I just I did that. I tried that and, and it's just not working. And so this is um, one of the reasons, because the word is sown immediately. They receive it with gladness, you know. Um, so going to um, my other scripture that I'm using as an example, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. And so in Proverbs 10, 22, the Bible says not not Bob Wells, but the Bible says, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. And so you sow that word and you just continue to get that word in you. But then Jesus explains that um, that can be sown on um, stony ground, which doesn't have a lot of root. So then the question is, is what is Jesus talking about root? And it, it is kind of um, talking about, um, you know, digging up that stuff that's on the inside of you and getting that cleared out so that there's no roots to block it up. But it also means that the word hasn't taken root. And so in uh, Ephesians chapter three, verse 17, the apostle Paul prays that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. There we go. So that's it. It's the root is rooted and grounded in love that Christ. So we talked about before that when you sow the word in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. So when you're sowing the word, you're sowing Christ, you're sowing Jesus, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. So having that word dwell in your heart to produce the results that the word says is going to produce you have to be rooted and grounded in love. So what is that all about? So the rooted and grounded in love is simply this. You have to read the Bible so that you understand how much God loves you. We all know that Jesus died on the cross because God loves us. But we have to know that, that the intensity of that love and how secure that love is. And that love doesn't change. God doesn't love you today and then tomorrow go, oh, you messed up or you said something bad or you did something wrong or you didn't do this. I don't love you anymore. God's love is not shallow like our love is. God loves us intensely and he will never stop loving us. Well, again, Romans chapter eight is my um, favorite chapter in the Bible. And in Romans chapter eight, God says there is nothing, absolutely nothing in heaven or on earth that can separate us from the love of God. So you get rooted and grounded in that love. What happens is you get a confidence, you get a, a knowing that what you have read is going to come to pass. What you have been confessing is going to come to pass because God loves you. He cannot not love you. He, he just loves you. He's just going to be there. He's just going to continue to love you. And, um, and so his word is true. So this Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. You say that and then you get bills in the mail and you, you feel like you can't pay them. And you say, oh, well, I knew God wouldn't take care of me. Don't say that. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. You continue to say it even if your lights get turned off. You continue to say it even if your car gets repossessed. 
You just continue to say it. It's not over just because your lights get turned off. It's not over because your car gets repossessed. It's not over until God makes you rich and adds no sorrow with it. And that's what's going to happen when you hold on to that word and you just keep swinging it at the circumstances. I talked about this before. The facts will line up with the truth as long as you keep speaking the truth to the facts. All right. I love y'all. Hope you have a great weekend.